One of the UN Sustainable Development Goals calls for the need to promote the rule of law at both national and international levels. Japanese law firm Nishimura and Asahi wants to realize a fair and affluent society based on the rule of law, while leading the way on diversity, equity and inclusion in their industry. My name is Rosanna Lockwood. I'm in Davos, where I sat down with some of the management team to find out how. Rutara Nakayama, Yuri Suganu from Nishimura and Asahi. It's wonderful to have you here with us in Davos, Switzerland, the setting place, of course, for the World Economic Forum, taking place this year under the theme Cooperation in a Fragmented World. Now, we're here to learn a little bit more about Nishimura and Asahi, your visions, your goals, what you're trying to do with the business. Let's start there, Mr. Nakayama. Just give us a sense of what you do. What's your company's purpose? Thank you very much, Rosanna. Nishimura and Asahi is the largest law firm in Japan. And we also have an international law firm with 90 offices around the world, mainly in Southern Asia, with more than 800 professionals. Next, our mission is to realize a full and fair society based on the rule of the law. Next, in order to achieve that mission, we pledge leading you forward as our promise to the client and society. And actually, we have written many epoch-making deals, mainly in Japan, such as the organization of TEPCO, or SHARP, or Jap Japan Airline. And recently, we advised Takata Corporation, also it's in the organization cases. And actually, in addition to the client works, actually, we ourselves are leading us forward. So actually, in that sense, you know, the, we recently published on the diversity and in inclusion initiatives. Next year, we set up Diversity Inclusion uh, Promotion Council. And next year, we got many prizes from the, the peer review uh, for that, you know, the, our uh, activities. Really interesting. And I heard you talking there about the motto, leading you forward. We'll find out a bit more about that, perhaps a bit later on. But first, let's talk about the way that your company is making a difference in, in the sort of social justice space, in judicial systems. How is it trying to do that? So our firm is trying to achieve positive changes both to the judicial system in Japan and the legal services sector. Let me first start by explaining how we have made positive changes to the judicial system. So 34 of, 34 of our partners are actively involved in the government councils and in committees that provide recommendations on uh, uh, policy making and uh, proposed legislation. In fact, since 2021, I have been serving on multiple uh, committees under the FSA, who is attempting to bring about legislation which will transform financing practices in Japan. This committee uh, consists of members from various backgrounds, including finance, academics, and the legal industry. The reason why I was invited to uh, join these committees is because of uh, my extensive experience in uh, dealing with uh, restructuring cases regarding SMEs and startups, as well as my experience in a globally renowned successful restructuring cases, such as Takata's $10 billion restructuring case in 2017. So within these committees, the goal is to uh, improve cooperation between two groups that had uh, historically had very fragmented relationship, namely the traditional Japanese banking sector and SMEs and startups. It has been uh, difficult for SMEs and startups to obtain adequate financing because of their limited access to real estate assets, uh, which are often used as collateral. So what we are trying to do is to change banks in Japan, look at collateral, and create a comprehensive new securitized system uh, that will allow SMEs and startups to obtain financing more easily. So I can hear the differences being made in the judicial space, but what about in your own industry? What type of positive changes are you trying to make in the legal services sector? 
So in terms of bringing uh, about positive changes to the uh, legal services sector, for example, it, in 2014, I was directly involved in the Mount Gox case. So as you may remember, uh, Mount Gox case was the largest like, uh, crypto exchange restructuring case prior to FTX. So it was the only global case of its size at that time. So there was absolutely no protocol for us to follow. Uh, so what we decided to do was something very unorthodox. Our clients, uh, that is users of Mount Cook Exchange, was a very fragmented group that has held together by one single thread. They uh, all uh, believed in uh, inherent uh, value of the Bitcoin. They believed in Bitcoin so much so that they wanted Mt. Gox to, to return their coins as opposed to obtaining cash. So uh, in order for us to realize this result, we needed to think about, uh, think on our feet and come up with a plan to, uh, uh, to, uh, that would lead to a cooperative solution for all parties involved. So what uh, we decided to do is to transform this from a typical bankruptcy to a restructuring case so that our clients could be returned their coins. As far as our clients were concerned at that time, this, that was a dream come true. Some really concrete examples there of how you're making a difference in those spaces. But let's, let's zoom out and talk about the position of Asian law firms internationally, Mr. Nakayama. Um, do you think we're going to see more presence of Asian law firms on a global stage? Short answer is yes. As you know, the South Asia is a very important region as for the economic perspective. They have a big population with a mid-range and a high range of the, the net worth in the individuals. And also it is very important for the supply chain, global supply chain. And, but they have a very so, so diverse about legal system as well as its black law legal system and also that they are in legal enforcement you know, the, the uh, realities. And also you know, the, we need to consider about their cultural background also. So actually uh, in order to you know, good services, good legal advice to our clients, uh, the Asian law firm needs you know, the both you know, the local knowledge and the local you know, capability, as well as you know, the, the, the knowledge or the capability for the international uh, the, the aspect. So actually, for example, recently, the Southern Asian countries introduced you know, the legal regime for the data transfer and the uh, privacy protection. Those you know, the data transfer and the privacy protection would be very important for the global companies in order to compliance. And but you know, the, so in order to do that, actually, the, we advised many global clients on the, uh, for the, you know, the, their you know, the integrated system or the consistent legal compliance system uh, among you know, those countries. Actually, in that you know, type of service is very you know, the unique for the uh, Southern Asia you know, the law firms. So in the sense that it is, you know, the, I think you know, the Southern Asia Asian law firm, you know, the presence would be you know, more important than ever. I can see you keep a very close eye on geographical territories. Does that mean that you've got more expansion plans at Nishimura and Asahi? Of course, yes. Actually, we just opened the Malaysian offices as in the 90s uh, overseas office. And also, we always see another you know, opportunities to uh, expand our you know, presence. But our challenge is in the, our strategy is to you know, the, uh, set up those you know, the overseas you know, offices from the ground up, not to just acquire or the, just in making a franchise. So in that sense, we first find in a, a very capable and good lawyers there, then the, uh, working with them and the, make them to understand our culture. So actually, the, uh, you know, uh, we achieve you know, the best services and the integrated uh, service to the client. So actually, that's our strategy. So actually, in the sense that we need some time to set up or expand in our presence. But, uh, uh, still, the, the, our, you know, the immediate well, the, uh, mission was a very important mission to be in the, our service to you know, uh, extend to the Asia from Japan. Now, I did promise to get back to that motto you first described, leading you forward. Uh, Mr. Garner, can you give us a sense of what that actually means in practice? 
So it is important for us to define the concept of leading you forward before uh, we uh, begin talking about how it can be applied. So to me, leading you forward means helping those who are unable to help themselves, uh, bridging gaps between uh, this, uh, affected groups and leading by example. So by engaging in activities uh, based on this concept, I can positively affect the lives of people around me, uh, namely my clients, colleagues, family, and even the society at large. Regarding society, in my role as a co-head of uh, our labor practices division, I have been actively uh, involved in assisting many of our, my clients with respect to work style reforms program. Uh, so many of Japanese uh, corporations are uh, at their crossroads and struggling with adapting to the ever-changing uh, HR landscape. One of the biggest uh, issues in Japan is karosi or this from overwork. Uh, the most frequent uh, things I'm dealing with is to ensure that corporations have policies to prevent uh, this from overwork. So measures as simple as frequent monitoring and uh, anonymous surveys have improved conditions dramatically in many cases. So uh, not only do I take uh, the role on uh, guardianship of the lives of these at-risk employees, uh, by doing so, I have been able to improve the fragmented relationship between the employees and employers for our clients. So by implementing the uh, leading you forward strategy, we, have, uh, we can uh, improve the lives of uh, people around us. And uh, that is, as a lawyer, the ultimate goal. It's great to hear that sense of responsibility from a legal firm. Uh, Yuri Sugano, Retire Nakayama, want to thank you both very much for joining us here in Davos, in Switzerland, uh, hearing about the values of your company and the way they tie in with this theme of cooperation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.